Financial inclusion in Nigeria increased to 45%, says the World Bank. European Union rolls out $1.3 billion to help Nigeria diversify her economy. Oil prices could hit $380 per barrel, JP Morgan wants. Plus, Asia Pacific markets rise. This is Business Express on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. And we are reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Leah Katun, Baba Tunde. You're welcome. President Mahmoudou Buhari's five-day state visit to Lisbon, Portugal, was a first-class success story of two determined nations to engender a close relationship for mutual benefits. Benny Adams compiled some of the benefits of that presidential visit. President Mahmoudou Buhari's five-day state visit to Lisbon, Portugal, has been described as a first-class success story of two determined nations to engender a close relationship. These are important for Nigeria because we are reviving relationships that have been ignored for a long time. And in addition to that, these are important engagements that would also you know, help in the acceleration of our country's economic growth, the attraction of investors, creation of jobs, and the general upliftment of the quality of life of our own people. Garbo Shehu is of the view that there is so much for both countries to benefit with Nigeria being a better beneficiary. On this trip, Nigeria signed eight bilateral agreements in the areas of political consultations, diplomatic training, research and exchange of information and documentation, cooperation in the field of culture, women and girls development, empowerment and in gender affairs, youth and sports. We are also keen to establish a direct air link between our two countries to further stimulate tourism people-to-people -people contact and social sporting and cultural relations. The visit also achieved a desire for a strategic partnership to strengthen the work Nigeria has been praised for, which is her stabilizing role in West Africa. The laying of a framework to strengthen security and cooperation between the two states. You are a great nation. President Obama once said about you, that you strive to overcome division and turn Nigeria diversity into a source of strength so you were able to build the largest economy in Africa. I so much agree with that. So we want to work with you. We want to work with your innovators. Lisbon's objective is to be the capital of innovation of Europe, but for that we need you. We need the African continent. We, we need to work with you peer to peer. Nigeria and Portugal have equally identified a common interest in the transatlantic gas pipeline, the Kano Maradi railway line being constructed by a Portuguese company and Portugal, and the recognition of Nigeria as one of the five centers for vaccine production in Africa. In the area of sports, the choice of Jose Passero, the Portuguese coach of the Super Eagles, Nigeria struck yet another positive card that resonates politically and diplomatically. In the field of renewable energy, Portugal provides 60% of energy to its citizenry from renewable sources, with the country ranking among the world leaders and hoping to reach carbon neutrality by 2030. And Garbashi, who believes Nigeria will benefit from such record-breaking achievement. Now, the proportion of Nigerians with accounts at 
regulated institutions such as banks, microfinance organizations, and mobile money service providers rose from 16% to 45% in 2021. This was disclosed by the World Bank in a report titled The Global Findex Database 2021, the financial inclusion, digital payments, and resilience in the age of COVID-19. The bank stated that the overall account ownership rate in developing economies increased by 30 percentage points from 42% in 2011 to 71% in 2021, a rise of more than 70%. Now, uh, let's uh, inform you that the federal government is seeing Africa's huge infrastructure gaps as opportunities for private investment through public-private partnerships. Secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, while declaring open the Africa Public-Private Partnership Network Investment Summit in Abuja, said all sectors of the economy are yearning for investments. Public servants, private sector players, and all who matter in the infrastructure space are represented here at the Africa Public Private Partnership Network AP3N Investment Summit in Abuja. Africa's private sector currently accounts for more than 80% of total production and two thirds of total investments, but there is still a lot more to do if the continent must make the best of the free trade area agreement to stimulate and create a vibrant private sector on the continent and accelerate infrastructure development, a number of issues must be addressed. There is definitely the need to create a welcoming and enabling environment for the businesses to drive. This can be achieved by reducing risk and cost of doing business and by securing private property rights or proprietary rights, improving governance, fighting corruption, simplifying regulations, and promoting competition. Nigeria, like South Africa, is already benefiting from PPP arrangements. I'd like to encourage every member of this network to take full advantage of this investment summit to attract more willing and capable private investors to invest in infrastructure development in Nigeria. This fund is a coward. It goes to an environment where it's well protected. We want to assure international community that their funds are well protected in Nigeria. But a lot still needs to be done. On each report, for instance, took us five years to close. And it's very difficult for any private sector to wait for five years. In that five years, uh, some of our partners, foreign partners, lost interest. COVID happened. Investment were diverted to other places. The two-day summit serves as a nesting place for ideas to be birthed and investor concerns like that of George Nwagu be addressed collectively. The Federal Inland Revenue Service says the filing of companies' income tax returns for the year 2022 assessments due on 30th June 2022 has been extended to 31st August 2022. This is for companies who were unable to meet the deadline as at the end of June 2022. Special Assistant Media and Communications to the Tax Authority said in a statement the decision was reached following request by companies for the extension of time. As a measure of goodwill and in line with the relevant provisions of the company's income tax act it had directed that all companies whose company's income tax returns for 2022 year of assessment that fall between the due between 30th june and 31st august 2022 are given up to 31st august 2022 to submit their returns to the service adding that the extension is a one of gesture by the service for only the 2022 year of assessments on company income tax returns and that companies who filed within this period of extension would not be subject to late filing penalty or interest for late payments. Mohamed Nami explained in that statement that the extension only applies to the filing of companies' income tax returns but does not extend to other taxes. Now in the last five years, we have seen official inflation figures increase cumulatively by about 93.88% due to rising costs. 
largely. The personal income tax of individuals and households today cannot really meet most of the demands. And of course, we're, we know that this is a global issue. And so our focus this morning on Business Express is on how this can be addressed or perhaps to pay more attention to the realities we have on the ground and with me in the studio is a financial expert and a professor of capital markets which you are professor you're welcome to business express thank you very much um, Leah. it's my pleasure okay uh, great we have seen ourselves in a situation that all over the world economies are bleeding Nigeria, not also an exception. We are, we are seeing a minimum wage is still at um, eighteen um, the, uh, thirty thousand naira, and then we are seeing also at that that inflation at the other side. We just cannot marry them. So we would want you to speak to the push and pull factors that are affecting Nigerians and our peculiarities this morning. So when we say that, for instance, we're, ex we're experiencing rising fuel costs, what does that mean to the average Nigerian? Of course, we know it's, um, it's what is feeding into uh, the inflationary pressure. And um, as you rightly noted, it's, it's a global issue, the rising fuel costs. Um, I'm sure that um, you, you, you know that recently uh, is even um, ongoing, uh, the protests in Ghana over um, rising fuel costs and the um, cost of living generally. So it's, it's actually a global issue, um, even in developed economies. In the US, for example, uh, inflation is witnessing an all-time high, 8.6%, um, um, you know, ditto for you know, some other economies. Mm. In um, Turkey, inflation rate has gone as high as um, you know, 79%. Mm. So it's indeed a global issue. And I think the major cause of um, uh, this, um, you know, happens to be the the Russian, you know, Ukraine war, uh, which um, has of course um, led to supply bottlenecks um, and um, you know le led to hike in, um, in in the in the price of international price of um, crude. Um, unfortunately for us, um, we are supposed to be benefiting from that, uh, but because, as you know, we have been importing fuel, um, so. Each time you see a rise in international crude oil price, um, the cost of um, fuel import also rises, and uh, ultimately it is the consumer, you know, that um, you know that bears that. So uh, I, I can say that um, it's largely attributable to the um, the fuel, the hike in fuel is attributable to the Russian-Ukraine um, war. Although in in Nigeria we also have our you know peculiar. Um, challenges uh, such as um, distribution bottlenecks, which is what I understand is um, affecting that of um, Abuja and some cities uh, in particular. Okay, mm. so we have this uh, particular picture we picked of the social media that made rounds in recent time. We're seeing petrol price galloping at a cheater's pace, food prices galloping at the horse race speed and um, we're seeing electricity price also the transportation price is just moving like the rabbit and then our income the slowest of all at the at, at the pace of the tortoise yes. what does this mean oh, 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 I, I, I i've seen this uh, as a matter of fact it's, mm -hmm. uh, it perfectly captures um, mm -hmm. you know the, the situation uh, your income is stagnant, mm -hmm. and, and yet the um, you know food prices um, prices generally you know are on the rise. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly food, you know, in our own case, um, as you know, food inflation is above 19 percent. Mm -hmm. The average inflation rate we are told is 17.71 percent. But food is um, where the pressure is, and um, that is uh, for obvious reasons. One, we also know that insecurity is part of it. The mm -hmm fact that farmers are unable to farm. So it is a supply thing, more or less. And just as you also rightly pointed out, it's uh, more of a cost push um, of uh, inflation that we are witnessing in Nigeria, 
you know, rather than demand pool. So in demand pool is where you have too much money, you know, chasing too few goods. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't say that there is um, too much money, especially in the hands of the ordinary Nigerians. And even the money we have in circulation is in the hands of, um, you know, quite a few. So, so what's the economic term for that? Uh, yes, when you, uh, that's a cost push. Cost push inflation mm -hmm. is when the, you have um, uh, um, the cost of production driving the inflation rate. Mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, demand pool, uh, as I said, when you have, um, you know, too much money. So um, income distribution is a factor because the bulk of the income is in the hands of the rich. And as we say in economics, the propensity to consume, mm -hmm. you know, for the rich is s smaller than that of the, of the poor. So you wouldn't attribute the inflationary pressure to demand pr uh, pressure, more or less. Mm -hmm. So it is more from cost. From, from the more, end of the yes, poor supply. Persons. So we have supply issues. Um, uh, you know, exacerbating the inflationary, uh, you know, pressure that we have. So insecurity is one of it, and of course, rising cost of production generally. You have electricity, you have um, um, that's energy cuts. You, have also, you also have, um, you know, fuel cost. In particular, what is pushing this one now is the you know, rising cost of um, uh, fuel, and of course. You also see that um, leading to rising cost of transport. You and know, the and queues that. are not disappearing, actually. Yes, the, 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 the queues are there because um, the, you have a, a system where fuel is subsidized. So um, very few sta stations that are selling at the subsidized price, okay? Of course, we'll have long, long queues. Um, That's why you also find, you know, black markets uh, for fuel, you know, uh, thriving. Um, people uh, who can't afford to stay in the queue resort to buy, you know, patronizing this um, roadside um, um, Black marketers. What is the economic implication when we have petrol price the high, the fastest? Uh, because a lot of people are out there having to deal with the black market. So you buy a cake, for instance. I bought a cake yesterday for 10 liters for, for, for 3,000 naira. That's because I, I, I didn't want to afford to come to work late. Exactly. What is the multiplier effect? Well, Ilya, yeah, maybe I should stand. You're standing. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. It is obvious. Um, you you have a situation in which you know there is rising you know poverty um, because your income is stagnant and you are uh, spending more than your income. So poverty level is rising. Okay. We also see a situation in which um, uh, this is also causing you know high rate of um, you know unemployment. Mm -hmm. And that is why I recommend that at this time, you know, people should um, adjust to. Uh, adjust their lifestyles, you know, adjust your lifestyles to the best, okay? People should also prioritize their, their spending because the only way you can live within your means um, amidst this rising cost of living mm. is to prioritize spending, okay? It's not just lifestyle. So if you are used to uh, taking, uh, you know, a bottle of drink um, every evening or, or two bottles of drinks, you reduce to, you know, to, to one bottle, you know, for example, okay? It's also important that you know, we minimize as much as possible out of pocket um, spending. Uh, yeah, spending. You, um, that place you, you, you want to go, must you go there? Is this something you can resolve you know, uh, using phone call? Mm -hmm. So you reduce that out of pocket um, you know, spending. And again, I also recommend uh, uh, for people that have backyards you know, uh, in their compound, is it possible to also plant the tomatoes, vegetables, you know, to grow things you can easily get from your garden as opposed to buying? Okay, maintenance culture is also very critical, mm -hmm. you know, at this point in time. So we we'll try as much as possible to minimize waste and adjust them. Um, talking about minimizing waste, yes. on a lighter note, uh, just yesterday we heard that the FCT is telling parks to close a uh, shop by 7 p.m. So whatever you need to do, if you want roasted fish, if you want a, a bottle of drink, if you want a smoothie or whatever it is you need, you need to do that before 7 p.m. and uh, go back home in good time because the parks would have to close at 7. Is that a plus? for personal savings? I, I, I think so. Um, I, 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 there must be a reason for that. Um, mm. It may not be unconnected with um, insecurity. Mm. Uh, I'm sure that's why that measure um, you know, is being put in place. Um, yes, of course, the more you stay out, out late, mm. okay, the more uh, likely you are to spend. 
So it's important that, um, of course, you go back to your families, whatever little money you have, you, you, know, you know, take back home. Okay, I'm told uh, yes. we'll need to take a Surviving COVID-19 series and then we will return to the discussion. Surviving yes. COVID-19 is next. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Emmanuel Samson is a Nigerian entrepreneur doing well in South Africa for the past decade and seven years ago decided to come back home to Nigeria and invest in the beverage industry with special interest in packaging clean, safe and purified drinking water using a technology new to Nigeria. But that is yet to happen seven years on. And when I came back, I discovered that the processes in trying to establish a factory in Nigeria is very tedious compared to other countries. As an entrepreneur, sometimes you want to set up a business, you need people to come and key into it so that they can be a part of what you are doing and also be able to expand more. The blow dealt the global economy by coronavirus made it even more difficult. Most businesses are folding up, especially those that are coming back to the country to try to set up. The environment is good for business, but I want to say something for a fact. I want to use that black as an example. I'm not sure it's the cost of registering the business that will determine the standard of the business. On accessing credits from the Central Bank of Nigeria, Emmanuel says, until now, he never knew it was possible at single-digit interest rate, but kept looking up to partnerships. In the true sense, my perspective initially was that I could do it on my own because I know for a fact going through any bank, I've not tried the central bank, I know that going through most of the financial institutions in Nigeria, there are a lot of bottlenecks. He tells of his South African experience. Out in South Africa, everybody has access to credit facility as long as you have a good product, a good system. But they also have insurance to back up some of the things where you don't have collaterals. So the issue of you running away is not there because government will try to do everything possible to engage you so that you can engage more people on the street to work. Manuel Sampson is hopeful that the dream of establishing a franchise in Nigeria will soon become a reality. China is where they are today. Malaysia is where they are today because they went down the low. They went down from the grassroots to look for people that are just setting up small-scale industry. They need to encourage small-scale industry. People like that are coming up. Because I could put up a unit of a factory, and you can imagine the number of lines, the number of people it will employ, and what government intends to do. And I can export, because I know of some countries where what we pay for water here is, is, is four or five times the price. Why can't we export? After we import water, we import other things from Nigeria to Nigeria. We can do all kinds of things here. And we also synchronized, before I left South Africa, we were branding for airlines. We were one of the first people to do branded drinks. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Okay, so uh, Prof, uh, perhaps before I let you go, we will come back to a very nice uh, illustration for you to, to tell us. So with what we have on ground now, yes. if I want to invest my money, where do I take it? Yeah, beautiful. You, you should um, first invest um, um, with advice. Okay, and whoever is advising you will tell you to invest in those um, um, assets that um, have returns that are above inflation rates. So you have to be mindful of the inflation rates. Your investment should be such that it will give you a return that is higher than inflation rates. And that's why I would recommend that at this point, uh, the, the stock market, um, you know, fortunately, mm -hmm. has a return uh, um, above 21%. Inflation rate is 17%. So, but of course, to invest in the stock market, you have to go through, um, a, you know, a broker. And I will advise this is the time to, um, you know, uh, invest in mutual funds, mm -hmm. especially for low-income earners. Again, um, commodities, you know, present another good opportunity because commodities, if you like, automatically adjust to inflation. If you are investing in grains, for example, and the price of grains, you know, are going up, of course, you stand to, yeah. you don't lose yeah. uh, because um, it's automatically adjusting itself, you know, mm. to inflation. And mm. one more thing I need to say, you know, Leah, inflation rate is 17.71%. Mm -hmm. That is the average. Mm. There are commodities today um, that have witnessed very, very, uh, you know, high rate of inflation. Take a model of Gary, for example, that used to sell for 400 naira last year. Okay, mm. today is 600 naira. That is a 50% jump. Yeah. Okay, if you take other items, you also have that. But there are also others 
that have also increased by uh, a rate that is lower than 17.1 percent so this is the time to identify alternatives what are those close substitutes mm -hmm. okay if gary has gone up for example okay can you think of alternative can you think of um, is a um, corn meal for example cheaper is a uh, tool for example cheaper so this is the time for uh, nigerians you know uh, under this yoke of inflation to identify alternatives you know as a survivor strategy okay yes. i thank you prof and i understand our time is up and so I would be letting you go, but then uh, I will also inform you that Nigerian stocks actually opened the week in the red. But then what is happening out there in the global market? Let's find that out. On the global scene, European markets are looking to build on solid momentum after the region's indices closed higher on Monday. Stocks nudged higher on Tuesday as global market looked to cement gains after a bruising week for stocks last week. Shares in the Asia-Pacific mostly rose on Tuesday as the Reserve Bank of Australia hiked interest rates in line with expectations. Nikkei 225 in Japan gained 1.03% to close at 26,423.47%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index paired earlier gains to rise 0.38%, while the Shanghai Composite closed fractionally lower at 3,398.94. Stock futures in the United States rose early on Tuesday morning after the major averages finished another losing week. Stock futures tied to the Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 59 points. S&P 500 futures inch higher and the Nasdaq 100 futures also was on the positive lane. Monday was a positive trading day for most African stocks as investors hope this trend will be sustained when the figures start to roll in. Boss said the able Business Express. And so we end this episode of the program and uh, we're certain that you will have a better understanding of where your money is going to and how to conserve the little that you have. Business Express returns tomorrow at 3 p.m. But I would like to also inform you that you can access all previous episodes on YouTube on the NTS channel. You can also communicate with us via our social media handles. Have a very, very successful and business friendly day.